But yeah. uh, thanks. Good to be back. I uh, love so... you guys, and I like talking to you, and I will not apologize for that, especially about such dope topics. Like, guys, George Lucas is coming back to Star Wars. There's no one in the oh, world no. I want to talk to about that than Matt, Robbie, and Forrest on Zeitgeist Zealots. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. When this come out? Oh, this is dropped two days ago. Uh, I don't think that, I mean, he's come back lots of times. Like he, he went, he was on the set of Ahsoka giving his, I'm putting quotation marks up blessing, but you know, uh, I think like after that white comment, he yeah, like, done. Yeah. Films. They were your kids. Yeah. Well, they are right. You know, I, I love them. I created them. Um, I'm very intimately involved in them and obviously to and sell you them, sold off, them, I sold them to the white slavers that take these things and. And, uh, <laughs> okay, but, but I mean, but, but having said all that and having. Right. He can, what is, say, he can only say positive things. Can we be honest? Star Wars. Can we be honest about here? Like, was George Lucas the best part of Star Wars? Because if, if my research and my education is correct, because I wasn't there for it, right? Uh, it really was George Lucas's wife at the time. Yes. In the, in the editing helm and, and, and the editing bay, who really mastered the the original trilogy. So it's like, it was like, oh, bring back George Lucas. What is this guy going to... Do you think this guy's more powerful so, than Bob Iger or Kevin Feige or uh, Larry Fink with ESG she, and BlackRock? She must not be named. No, dude, you need, so, you need his wife. We need to bring back Mrs. X well, Lucas. I so think. it's, it's you know, it's not just his wife. He had a whole team. That yeah. were that rained, rained is, him in. Yeah, he had, like he's running BLM. himself with friends and family who reined him in. Yes. And when you get the prequels and they give him carte blanche, that's oh. when he starts seeing the suckage. Oh, Misa, uh, Misa thinks this is a good idea. Misa thinks we should just do the whole trilogy around Jar Jar Binks. Oh, yep. Look who's here. You don't have somebody reining him in. Yep. No. It's George. It's George. Uh, welcome, George. I will see what happens. I don't think it's going to change a, a single fucking thing. No. George being involved or not? It's not. Um, it's not going to change a single thing. Well, it will yeah. get people talking about it. It'll bring some hype back into it. But ultimately, you're going to watch the Acolyte, which is directed by Harvey Weinstein's old executive assistant, right? So gross, disgusting. I don't well, think the Acolyte like just like that trailer anyway, right? The, the Acolyte right. looks terrible. I didn't even watch it. Listen to down below. What do you I mean, think? We'll watch it on Zeitgeist Sell It. Yes, we will. Like Velma. Uh, I've watched the first couple of episodes of Velma. I've got some thoughts oh, about God. it. Maybe oh. we'll maybe we'll I'm talk about it at the end. Right we'll now. talk about it at the end. We're not going to talk about it now. Maybe we'll talk about it at the end. So, uh, really quick, I highly, 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 highly recommend one of my favorite documentaries that kind of, you know, discuss the whole issue with George Lucas. It's called The People versus George Lucas. It's on a bunch of streaming platforms. I think it's on Amazon right now, but it is a great watch. And it kind of gets into like how George Lucas had a carte blanche for the prequels and just ruined all the goodwill that was mm -hmm. given to him. And it's told by these two guys who were hardcore Star Wars nerds who were fans growing up and experiencing the prequels and just their utter disdain for it all. Um, I mean, the prequels great. gave us two, like, excellent uh, animated series. You know, The Clone Wars and, um, I guess, yeah, so, uh, the, the 2D one with, that Gennady Tarkovsky did. Um, this, this, so, I mean, this gets you into the idea, though, is when you have people writing him in or using his ideas or using his universe. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look at the books. Look at the expanded universe. Oh, my now, gosh. Not part of... What do they call it? Fables or something now? Uh, legends. Legends. Uh, Expanded. Legend. You know, look at that. People were using his world and crafting such great Amazing. Know, stuff I mean, he didn't, stuff. he didn't come up with Thrawn. He didn't come up with Thrawn. And Thrawn, up until Ahsoka, was an excellent character. Yeah, um, yeah it's sort of like Zack Snyder. Like, Watch just, like, it. Him in for Rebel Moon. Or if he okay. just hired yeah. a... If he had just hired a competent screenwriter or... Or if like someone just like had the balls to sound like Zach gets a stupid fucking idea, um, or you know, I, th I really hope that someone like does like a Rebel Moon comic, and it's just like like take the idea, but um, it's just like Star Wars has been done to death, uh, Sam and Samurai has been done to death, so, and but I think Zach whoa, 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 whoa. Also... are you say are you saying that we're Star Wars saturated, Forrest? Not at all. Yeah. Are you I saying that? I, I lost it. 
I'm right. only going to watch Andor going forward. I think I'm just done with Star Wars at this point. <gasps> that, brings me, that brings me to, to The point, fuck though. you will. You're still... on this podcast. You'll watch every fucking Star Wars content that comes out, you piece of shit. That's don't, right. don't, don't you, what are you right. talking about? Yeah. I'm only going to watch Andor. Season 2 is coming out till no, 2027. You, look, I gave you a movie. You made us watch Hawkboy. I gave you all a pass I'm on so Bad bigger. Batch, which apparently mm. is okay. still going on like the finale's next or the coming out this week or whatever so i don't know uh but you but, will, you will watch star wars you do not have to enjoy it but you will watch it and or is a great it. great idea you know you treat star wars like it's a mature you know uh product mm-hmm. and you give it you know what it truly needs instead of trying to make Andy it circus i don't want to say like oh well, god say, he's like, so good i don't want to say like family friendly and i feel that's kind of the issue is george lucas wanted to bring the whole family in every into star wars and that's I how you sell toys saying that and that's how you sell toys that's how you do everything but when you make it family friendly you kind of make it goofy and, and just worthless um, and Andor is a great example when, when, of when you it, attempt like, the mature franchise Matt. it is. <laughs> when, when you attempt fam- family friendliness, you get Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I will, I will die by this. My friend has a copy of the prequels, and they have Jar Jar actually speaking in Gungan. They dub it over. It's like fan copy. Nice. And it, I love that. I love that so just much. That alone, just that alone helps it out so much and yeah. like they'll have like subtitles but the subtitles aren't like what he's really saying and it's right. a really cool like oh mix. yeah no r2d2 we don't know what the fuck r2d2 saying why do we need to know yeah. what jar jar is saying that's yeah. i love that that's as, so as I, right one of my favorite one of my favorite snl skits involves charles barkley and they're all in the star wars universe and he can't understand what all the different creatures and droids and aliens are saying mm-hmm. and he's supposed to be a jedi and i'll have to link it but it's hilarious because, like, how can you understand what he's saying? Do you speak, like, 500 languages? And he just gets more and more confused and ends up shooting somebody he's not supposed to because yeah. he can't speak, like, Wookiee. You know? Ah. That's a And, uh, yeah, so uh, I think uh, is that another piece of news that I wanted to go over real quick is that Zack Snyder, despite getting abysmal reviews for Rebel Moon, Netflix still believes in him. And he has his own animated series coming out later this year called Twilight of the Gods. Ooh, so, so is Zack Snyder the new Adam Sandler? Who I mean, gets a ton of money. He gets a ton of money. To make shit, Netflix. yeah. People Adam's... will still watch it. Mm-hmm. And it'll get Netflix the ratings that they need. So I'm calling that's the it thing right about, now. That's the thing about Netflix. Um, like, it's okay if they make a shitty product because, like, people, what do they have to lose? They don't have to, like, go yep. out, right. drive, spend money go sit in a theater with other people they don't know, you know, so like Netflix is like, because they know people will watch anything at home. They have nothing to lose. People well, will not they, drive they out to the, the movies to see anything. Yeah. They know that somebody's Usually like, gonna I have be nothing to watch. Good. Right? I have nothing to watch. Let's just watch this Zack Snyder film. Just have like you heard? Wait, have movies. you guys heard Zack Snyder talk about his first film, though, with the watch numbers and how much money it would have made or whatever? So he's talking about like uh, Netflix... I'm, I'm going to get all the numbers wrong, right? This is just take the feel of the story. But he's in this interview, and he's talking about how the watch numbers for Rebel Moon were insane. And, like, uh, so-and-so, like, like you know, uh, I'll say 130 million people watched Rebel Moon. And Netflix assumes that 2.5 oh. people are so watching... People. Uh, 2.5, a yes. movie whenever they're watching Netflix. 2.5 so, people. Yes. Yeah, 2 so, people and a person cut in half. Okay, exactly. Right? So that's really, so that 130 is more like 400 million. And if they all bought like a $20 movie ticket, like this movie would have grossed like 2 billion or, or 2.5 or $3 billion or whatever. Some some ridiculous astronomical number. And dude, when he was saying this to me, I thought for sure, I was like, oh, this is this is cope. This is pure delusion. Like I am, I'm not a, I'm not a Snyder fanboy, right? I do like me some Zack Snyder, a hundred and ten percent. It's well documented, right? But like when he was saying this, I was like, oh, dude, you have been uh, sucking at the nectar of your fa- uh, of your Twitter feed for far too long. Like I think it's yeah, what, I mean, what's it happening seems with like Rebel the Moon. Movies- 
the movies where he had like less creative control. You no, know, Dawn of the Dead, Three Hundred. Yeah, you got to reel. Uh, you got to reel these creatives in. You have to reel Man them in. Steel. But you no, can't. No, Most you people can't didn't like do... Man like of Steel, but a lot of people did. Um, Nobody talks about Sucker Punch. No one talks about Sucker, Sucker Punch. Punch. Right. Sucker Everybody Punch. forgets that Sucker Punch was one of his films. And it was probably one of the first ones where he had like more creative control, and it was hot garbage. Yep. Oh yeah. And it was like basically like a much more stupider version of Inception, in the sense that there's different levels of whatever her mind, her mindscape, whatever. Yeah. It was really stupid. It was like it was way too ambitious an idea for someone like Zack Snyder to execute. He should have been like gotten someone to like write the idea better. Ah, three hundred was really good. I I know Rob and I saw Frank Sucker Miller, Punch. Though. Rob a, and I saw Sucker Frank, Punch, but he he Frank Miller comic. He still made the movie. Yeah, but he Sucker Punch wasn't based off a comic. That was his own idea. No, no, no. Sucker Punch. I'm pretty sure Sucker Punch is a comic. Rob, can you can you? No, look no, up? it's not. It was an original. Idea. That's an, that's that's an original idea. Okay. Yeah, um, uh, Sucker Punch. What about Sucker Punch? Uh, if it if that was original or if it was based on um, that was like his first IP. original movie. I didn't know Zack Snyder can make original movies. I thought Rebel Moon was. I mean, his Rebel first Moon one. is technically an original movie because it's uh, it's a rip off of Star Wars, Warhammer, and like Seven Samurai. But Wait, can you say it's a rip off of Star Wars when it was it was originally written to be a Star Wars uh, IP and then Star Wars passed on it? Can you say it's a rip off when it was supposed to be intended for that? I interesting, I, I, interesting I no. thought. Rob but they're heavily Punch is indeed in an original movie. Star Wars, that being Star Wars. Yeah. Sucker Punch is the original, Robbie? Yeah. All right, Grok. Yeah, 300 we'll, we'll... was uh, Frank Miller. Yeah, that we'll... was like Frank Miller's last good comic before he went crazy. I uh, think he did Superman Year One, which I think people like better. But to be fair, we already had like 30 other Superman origin comics. We did not need another one by Frank Miller. 